you guys are going to do this on a non-calculated portion of a test? First of all, if the only thing you remember is to rewrite it in this format, you have the cube root of 27 squared. Well, I know my squared number is up to 15. I do not know it's 27 squared. Well, if I didn't have a calculator, obviously I could do old school, right? And I could figure that out, I'm sure. But then I have to figure out the cube root of that number, right? Which it could be even, it could not. I don't really know it, but it's, it's not really going to be anything fun to find the cube root without using a calculator. So is there another way we could simplify this, especially if I'm not given a calculator? Well, the best thing that I'd like to go with you guys is look into other ways we can recognize 27. And hopefully by this time, the reason why I've given you guys so many problems is hopefully you guys developed a pattern. 27 is not just a special, is not just a random number. What, what do you know about 27? What has 27 shown up for? What, is, what types of problems has 27 been very common with? It's a cube root of three. It's a, yeah, it's a cube number, right? 27 is 3 cubed. Or you could say the cube root of 27 right, is equal to 3. That's something that's shown up. Every single time you've had a cube root, I guarantee, oh, if you guys look at your homework, when you've had a cube root problem, you've probably had 27 or 81. It's probably been one of those numbers, right? It showed up, right? That's a pattern. You guys see that. You guys should be familiar with that. So what I want you guys to understand is 27. Oh, wow, that is a, that's a cube number. Well, what would happen if I rewrote this as 3 cubed? So if I rewrote that as 3 cubed, now could I apply one of those rules over there? Yeah, Josh, what, what would I want to do? Which rule? What do you think? Which rule when I have an, up, an exponent raised to a power? Well, well, there's no product going on here. But you could say that you could definitely use the power rule because you just have one exponent. So remember, this is technically 3 over 1. So this is 3 raised to the 3 over 1 times 2 over 3. And what's 3 over 1 times 2 over 3? That's 3 to the 6 over 3, which is equal to 3 squared, which is equal to 9. Yes? Oh, I'm sorry, I lost you. What? Like, instead of showing it as a fraction, like, can we do it as, like, we're still doing the like, cube root of it? You mean this? Like, when we have 3 to the 6, and then we know that we have 3 How did you get 3 to the 6th power? No, this is with the uh, cube root before. I know. I I'm this same problem? Where'd you get where's to the sixth power? No, I'm not. You do the, if you do it under the if you do the power rule, you get a two times three, which is six. But right. you still have it under the three root. And then you can, oh. and then you can do it, can you do it like in different steps? Yeah, but again, I mean yeah, yes, three over six over three, exactly. That'd be the cube root of three to the sixth power. Yeah, but and then yeah, exactly. But why, do you want to do 3 to the 6th power? It's the same thing as 27 squared. It's a big number. Right? No, what I'm saying is then, then divide it afterwards. Divide the 6th divided. Yeah, that's what I did. Taking like an extra step. I just showed an extra step. Yeah. But yeah, you're just simplifying it and get to there. Okay. I was just showing an extra step. Okay. You're right. Just so students wouldn't always ask where did I get that and so forth. So the only difference, ladies and gentlemen, is you 